Mic test, mic test. We are live. Hi, everyone. Look at all a bit. All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's painting stream. It's been a pretty long time, like maybe a couple of months since we last painted. And I know that there have been a few people asking me about um, food. Okay. So, there have been a few people asking me about my painting process. You know what? I'm going to be right back because I realized that Crimson left his laptop on and it's broadcasting my voice. I can hear myself, but I don't like hearing myself. One moment. Okay, we are safe now. I got Crimson's laptop, and, and none of you will have to listen to my voice twice over, just once. And I don't have to hear myself at all, which is a good thing. So as I was saying, it's been a couple of months since we last did a painting screen. And in that time, I've been painting a lot of terrain. I've been doing lots and lots of stuff. But um, I think I've had quite a few people ask me for help and guidance on painting terrain. So I figured that since we had a whole bunch of terrain that I've just prepped recently, I could talk through my process more. So today's painting stream is going to be a lot more tutorial heavy as compared to just me sitting there and painting for two hours while you guys stare at me paint. I mean, you're going to stare at me paint either way, but one will have a bit more talking and not just uh, shit posting. You are showing? Yeah, it's great. Like, it's nice that you guys are just tuning in and hanging out while working and stuff. So, it's nice to keep me company. And at the same time, we can all be productive together. Or we can all be unproductive together. So, we're a little late today because we had meetings before this. But if you're tuned in for this, please say hi. Um, I don't bite. I don't always fight. Maybe just a bit. I'm gonna drop the link to the stream to a couple of friends who were asking me about doing more painting streams. So if you guys have any questions, you can ask me right now. I'm not gonna start painting right away. And also, hey Lidro, hey Ryan, hi Carl. I see our usual crowd are all in chat tonight. Hello everyone. It's nice to have you here with us. In spirit. Let's go, let's go. So you will notice that I was talking about D&D marketing because I realized that we have quite a few large chunky buildings with a lot of larger terrain already. But we do not have, I guess, the smaller pieces that I want to have for a market. So I picked up some stuff from our friend Ray Victor's Miniatures. And I'll be working on that today. And I'm going to be using a variety of techniques. But most of this stuff is going to be pretty basic. So if you are new to painting, there should be no issue following us as well. What book was this? What was my dinner? I don't think I had dinner. I had a very late lunch if that counts. I had pasta. But before I get to the painting part, I want to show off oh, some of the new and shiny stuff that our friend actually painted for us on his big printer. But some of this is some stuff that I printed as well, so... Okay. 
New toy time. It has been two months. I have a lot of new toys to show off. Did Crimson do anything, though? I mean, the man breathes and does things like Sydney, and it's normal for him by now, right? He should be used to it. Come on. How many years has it been? So, can any of you recognize where this comes from? It's one half of it, and it connects to the other half like this. Do you really want to do a painting stream? Are you that excited? You should bug him about it the next time we stream. This. Guess what this is? Um, it's new time, so uh, barely fresh out of the oven. There's those sockets are here to insert tentacles. That sounds terrible out of context. I'm not going to say that again. But like tentacles aside, I believe it fits on here. Nicely. So uh, this is a spell jammer. It's a spell jammer, damn it. It's not a weird slipper. Uh, I don't know about you, but I don't normally have tentacles in my slippers. One time I had a lizard and I stepped on it and it screamed and now I always check my slippers before I put them on. Because I don't want to have screaming lizards. It was very traumatizing. I was like 10. Yes, it's a boat. Uh, it is actually part of the spell jammer that we'll be working on. There are other pieces. I'm not going to bring them all over. But I'm going to be installing like magnets on the bottom and top so that they can align nicely. And for this little... Uh, Holes here. I think they're normally meant to have like filament inserted in that. Screw that. I'm gonna use like steel wire, use that, pin it all the way through, and it'll be super solid. And when Crimson drops it, it will not break. I hope. Maybe I should uh, put it extra varnish just in case. But okay, yeah, new toys. I have so many things to paint. I'm really excited to get around to actually painting them. But then leaving them in the backlog for like years, because who does that? Certainly not me. <laughs> yeah, I totally do that. But it's not a miniature, it's terrain. I, I paint terrain quite fast. Like, maybe months instead of years? So it's a totally different time scale here. And also, I kind of just painted this up in the past few days. Uh, if you have seen my Instagram, you have seen this. This took me less than an hour to do it in total. So I am quite proud of how, with how it turned out. And I think that when we get a chance to use this, our players are going to hate it like so much. So big Elden Ring vibes. But when I was posting this online, someone was telling me that this reminds me of that game called Blasphemous. Because the, the, the protagonist had this like white pointy head with the taunt as well, so I end up editing it and adding a bit of white to the head. And I may have gone slightly overboard for the blood effects, but they were really fun. I, I never thought that splattering things with blood would be so fun. It's not normally something people talk about. In polite circles. Right? Right. Yeah, and, and the Sailor Moon pose. So, I cannot unsee a paladin doing a Sailor Moon pose and, and then we just turn him into an Iron Maiden. Okay, I think it hits a hip. I'm not sure. I can't tell sometimes. In the name of Saloon, I'll punish you? I suppose... Oh, I don't really want to think about 
what happened to the last person who was punished, as you can tell, it's very weird inside. That is disgusting. But let me show off more market stuff because Crimson went, yes, I think we need to have a few more things for the market. Maybe a few more stores and tents. I don't even stores and tents. I was like, so you're saying that you need me to build like a marketplace? Just like, maybe. Marketplace piece number one. Piece number two. Uh, I had a whole bunch of tables and all that to to fill like marketplaces and stalls with. This is not even all of them. I have more. So Kyle just painted some for us, and that's great. So these pieces are from Infinite Dimensions. I, I have done a bit of pre shading work on this. You can tell because it looks smooth. Airbrush. I'm not sure about having a phantom mask as a slave, but if you want a painting slave, I can volunteer phantom for you. I'm just not sure whether or not he will survive. Okay. So, a whole bunch of stuff that I want to really paint up. And most of this are just going to go on the to be painted pile. I try and at least prime them to this standard so that even if I don't paint them up, I can have them on the table and it doesn't look terrible. But today, I prepped a small box of stuff, which I even nicely labeled this tree box. Because if I don't put things in the boxes and label them, they get lost. It's nice I lose the boxes too. It's like a 50 50 chance. Behold, my stream box. And behold, I have very nice handwriting compared to Crimson's. If Crimson wrote this, you won't be able to read it. So, a couple pieces, um, some bottles, glass, parchment, books, in various configurations. So I think John should be able to recognize this. Because I'm sure that he did not have as much fun sculpting this. And these have all been primed. I mean, they're old, but they're so useful. We can just toss them to any table and they really work for flashing out that table. But I do find that terrain like this can be a little awkward to paint because since when you're painting larger terrain, you don't care so much about being as precise. But with stuff like this, you do have to practice and it just a lot more of the skills that you use in painting smaller miniatures. So uh, back when I was painting some banquet table that had lots of four of them. They look gorgeous. But they were also a pain in the ass to paint. Like huge pain. Okay, I think these are the tomatoes. Red, red goes with red. If I'm having trouble painting the bread, we say it's a pain to paint. Don't kill me. And so these are all airbrush, right? And I know that not everyone has an airbrush. Uh, so I figured that I would just show what you can do if you just get a set of dry brush going. And to do that, I decided to buy a super cheap makeup brush set. <laughs> And let's see what I have inside. So just open this. It just came in earlier today. Nice. Leather pouch. Um, mascara brush. I don't think I'll be using this that much. And you have a whole bunch of makeup brushes. So it's like maybe five bucks. So it's super cheap. And you don't have a very long brush handle, but your dry brush is right, so you don't need a long brush handle. 
and you have some really nice short brushes. Uh, the fact that they have this little sharp tip makes you have some really good control, can really get in there with some of the weirder shape parts. If you're painting vehicles, this lets you get into those corners really nicely, right? Without having to worry about making everything look like it's circular, like an airbrush. So this brushes are gonna be crazy useful. I'll probably mainly keep this larger brushes uh as for doing to it. Or this brush in particular I can use for most things for get a really nice soft highlight for ZFO dry brush. And also, uh, I'm not sure if you guys actually know this trick, but if you want to apply a base coat or a priming coat, and you want to be really smooth, very soft, and get into most places, you can use a makeup brush like this to apply your base coat. So because the brush is so soft, it goes on really smoothly. It goes on really nicely. And... It can hold a lot of paint, so it's one of the fastest way to apply like just a base coat color, and then just clean it off and swap to another brush, and just dry brush up to a brighter color. So anyway, because I paint a lot of terrain, people were asking me, "How do you paint wood?" To which I say, "With great difficulty," but actually no, it's really simple. So I think that the reason most people have trouble painting wood is because they look at the the wood around them in the wall and they look at it and assume that hey I need to paint wood grain for everything I do. That's not true. That is like super untrue because if you zoom out far enough from nature scale, you will notice that you don't really see wood grain on most pieces unless it's like planking or like a ship and if you want to do wood grain on a ship and draw in those lines line by line be my guest I'm not doing it but I have in the past which is why I'm telling you not to do it and so looking at this miniature that I painted right um the sculptor has sculpted in the wood grain, right? You have the glues. And even without me doing all those tiny ass lights, you can tell that it's wood. Uh, if you can't tell that it's wood, I'm sorry. Get your eyes checked. But I think my point is that generally speaking, when you are painting at miniature scale, you should be worrying about how things look overall rather than going in and worrying about textures unless this textures is something that you really want to work on as part of a larger scale miniature or something that you paint to higher standard so when it comes to miniature painting especially for smaller terrain pieces i'm going to tell you focus on your values you want to make sure that the smaller bits that you want to showcase are a lot brighter than everything else and that is why I went in so brightly for all these pieces, right? Like, this cheese right here, it's, it's, it's cheese. Like, this cheese, it's super bright. And I realized that for a lot of people that are new to painting, they don't think that I need to go a lot brighter to start with. And then they're going to put colors over this and they're and just super dark. So do yourself a favor and underpaint a lot more brightly when you're working with, with this. And if after that you're gonna be using techniques like you can speed paint, contrast paints, uh, which I will be using to paint these, it makes life much, much easier for you. You get a much brighter, much more attractive approach to things. So a good example is that I was super half ass with painting this, and I stopped halfway through, right? But this was a very low quality, like slightly darker zenithal highlight, and I kind of just went in with some uh, instant colors from Skill, 
center five. And then I took a little bit of bright and bright white, just mix it into color and highlighted it. And honestly speaking, it doesn't look too bad. I need to go in, I need to pick out the details and do the highlights, but I think it's a pretty good start. Like, I can't complain too much. Maybe a bit. Or, get something like this, right? And to be honest, this is really dark. If you are super new to painting, it's gonna be really hard to get a contrast up. And also, you will have noticed that when I was airbrushing this and did a quick Xyantor Prime, I only went up to this brightness, and it's not bright enough. I also made the mistake of aiming the airbrush a little too low and not enough at his face, so it looks like his crotch piece is glowing. Mm, yeah, I know. Glowing crotch pieces are not a feature of his own. And so a couple of weeks back, I had to paint stuff up super fast. The most common part should be highest value, yes and no. But generally speaking, your eyes tend to be drawn to the part that's brightest. So uh, sometimes you tend to focus on the part that's you know near the top. Uh, so that's normally the face, which is where you one focus to be, or around the shoulders and chest piece. So sometimes some paints will design the miniature so that you look at the brightest part and then your eyes will roam around the miniature. So I painted this. This dude. He has very nice things as me. I painted this dude in about half an hour. And he is not by any means a super amazing paint. But for half an hour off work, I think it's pretty good. Though I, I do still have to fix his, uh, his base and actually gain that. But half an hour of work uh, for something like this is perfectly doable for a newbie painter. Uh, maybe if you were not as precise with how you're using paint, it would take maybe one hour to do this. But I can assure you that most people will be happy to do this in one hour if they're completely new to paint. And this is done using, I guess, what people have been calling a slap chop painting method. But it's really just a zenithal prime using two colors over black or brown, whatever is dark enough and then applying transparent paints. So most painters have known for years that working with transparent colors or more transparent paints lets you paint much faster. And why is that? Because when you are layering these colors over each other, you don't have to worry as much about blending. If I put down a red, if I want the rate to look more 3D, I can just shrink the area when I'm applying that rate and apply a second layer. And that second layer will be brighter and look as though there's some gradient. And that's a natural blending effect. This works because paint is naturally transparent. It's always a bit translucent, no matter how well it's supposed to cover. Um, a lot of people try very hard to use paint that is super opaque that covers very well but if you don't have the brush control to place that very precisely on the miniature exactly where you want it to go you're going to be working against yourself and have a lot of mistakes that you need to cover up or go back down or try and fix with a wash and then when you do the wash and you don't know how to clean up your wash you end up having your miniatures look very dirty and dull and dark so learning how to do a simple underpainting type with a dry brush, with an airbrush if you haven't, because it's much faster, 
but this took me like 10 minutes to dry brush along with another miniature. And that's because I was being picky. So if it's something that you have the time you can set aside to do, I think you're gonna find that it's gonna help you be a lot better as a painter. Learn how to underpaint and it will save your life as a painter. Because you don't have to be precise with it, you don't have to be even super good with it. But if you're gonna be doing things like speed painting using contrast paints, it will take your images from well okay, I guess it's shaded to hey that looks pretty good on the table. So for this, I can just use like two colors. I use an off-white, kind of a yellowish khaki kind of tone. And then I went up to a near white and just dry brush it on. And after applying colors, I got this. So today, I'm going to be working on these. And I've not decided what I want to start painting. So do you guys have any suggestions? What I should start with. Because I can like use all the paints. I have so many paints to use. Just need to like reach over and make them. Then. Oh, I will say that I've been using a lot of oil paints recently. And they actually work really well with the underpainting techniques. Uh, it's just that they have a tendency to stink a bit, so you do need to learn how to work with them. But they're actually quite easy to use because you can just apply them and like I use a sponge and remove the higher spots. It's painting that even crimson can do and that's something that I think is quite important. Right. Let's change this. Let's change all buttons. Let's go. Should I just roughly demonstrate how it works in a single piece first? Something nice and easy. I have no idea what this is supposed to be. Uh, John? What's this supposed to be? Is it like a bunch of flour? Rice? Millet? Grains? Come over here. Yeah, box of transparent paints. Okay, don't drop, don't drop. Right. So I now have a box where I transferred all my transparent paints. Okay, not all, just most. My pro and cool stuff is not in there. And I've been using that for when I'm speed painting these. Transparent white. Purple. So that's where you are. You went missing a stain. Ah. Uh, okay. Let's go with this. I'm gonna go with the one that's less highlighted. I'm gonna move everything else aside. Arrange it next to me. So my OCD is shown. It's gonna be 10 minutes in the stream of me rearranging things. And triggering everyone else because it's not perfectly aligned. Yes, the camera is also slightly skewed. Or you could say that, you know, it's my cutting mat that is slightly skewed.
And you know the worst thing? I only have one of these. So I have one empty box. Two magical keys. Uh, to start with, I'm probably going to be painting it a slightly yellowish color. These were all initially painted with a black brown from Pro So super useful color. And then I just mix in white and went all the way up. But because there's black in there, it grayed out slightly. That's okay. So if I'm going to be super lazy and paint this yellow, let's go for a more desaturated yellow. Uh, you will notice that I always, always go brighter for these colors because it's going to dull down a lot when it's dry. So let's ask this yellow. Thankfully, it's Astus and not Astros. That is a different problem entirely. Um, here are my baby paper doll. I'll be sharing on Twitter. All right. I don't think today's stream is going to be super long. That's what I always say, and then end up almost going over time. So you have that color in here, right? So now apply this all over. And you can tell that because this is yellow, the coverage is what? Let's call it crap, because it is crap. Ah, uh, yellow. Yes. I see you have learned my hatred of the color. It is the worst color. I see because I did some other painting of this. Uh, just tossing that on means I don't have to spend as much time getting that color to look okay. Though I will still go, go back in there, I think, with dry brush later on. Make it look brighter. But for now, in the meantime, I'm just like behaving applying this channel. So for wood, I'm going to be super lazy and use Pro Approach Transparent Brown. But I might demonstrate a few different colors of wood with the browns and reeds that I have on hand. This. Once you've done your other painting for this, this is just the easy part, but it's just messing around and painting stuff up. Alright, so the next thing up, I think, is going to be the cheese. We have a lot of cheese. Hmm. And I guess that most of the time when you think of cheese, you think of bright yellow cheese. Especially because it's slightly cartoony. So rather than going with that slightly darker yellow, let's go with the kind of yellow that everyone hates to paint. Very bright, very sunny yellow. And it's hard. let's see how it turns out. Because don't forget, like I said, I don't normally do yellow or grey. And even though this base is brown, it looks a bit greyish right now. So this might not be the smartest choice. It's okay. What's the that can happen? I just have to be paid things. That's easy. Okay, bright yellow. But use this on the large piece. 
Okay, it's not. The coverage is, is crappy. I'm just applying this. See, and you can tell it's easy to move. It's not a good thing. Okay, I can counteract that by adding a little bit of orange in. Where for orange? So it easily contrasts yeah, and then yellow which is pretty orange. Add that in. It's a very dull orange, but when you mix it with the yellow, it should help quite a bit. There we go, it's a bit more orangey now. As you can see the paint of painting yellow. This is why you want to go bright white. If not, this would be a lot worse. Self together. Hello, Ghost Bear. See so you join this. Welcome to the painting stream. Tonight we are painting market goods. It's from the Faye Victor's Manager's Nine. I should add this to the store since I have test printed it successfully. That will be, but this is actually between the two. Okay, there we go. It looks a little more appetizing now. But I still don't recommend eating your paint. Do not eat your paint. Don't get in the habit. Not all paint brands have colors that are safe to consume. Okay, so yeah, that was good enough. If I were going to be really picky, I would go back in and dry brush it brighter, but wait on this. So, this is the color of the big cheese. Cheese everything. So I'm just kind of applying a really, really thick coat. But making sure that it doesn't pull too much. So I'm taking my paint and just dragging that out along the surface. Spreading that in. And I'm not too worried about getting it into recesses for some parts because you're not going to be able to see it easily. And because I already did my pre shading. It's going to be naturally dark. So, cheese. More cheese. Cheese too. But right now, all cheese is white. Yeah. Cheese has all been nice to slice up for consumption. I kind of feel like doing a wax coating because on this cheese. Maybe I should make it like bright red. Like that one kind of cheese that we all grew up eating. What's it called again? The one in the like the red wax shells that you peel off and then you just eat that.
I don't recall what it's called. <coughs> no, you know, like, oh. like the, the bite-sized cheeses that you can buy at supermarkets. And there's just a little tab that you just, just peel off, it goes around like the mac and wind shape cheese, and then you peel off the red wax, and you get the cheese to just bite into. Laughing cow, yes. Do you recall what the exact product was called? Because I like that. Uh, there's this one time my family like bought up. It's supposed to last a week. I finished it in one day. I like cheese. Cheese is good. I'm also very glad I was not lactose intolerant. That is good stuff. And I think that brand also had really good cream cheese. There was this, is it the same brand that had those little cheese cubes? They were all different flavors. Oh man, that stuff. It's, it's addictive. Loved it. Yes, the mushroom is delicious. Takahiro Mei that has followed. Hi Takahiro, thank you for joining us. And thank you for the follow. If you'd like to, you can also join us on our Discord to chat miniature painting or learn more about our D&D games. Or, you know, just post random stuff. Okay, so cheese. Cheese one, cheese two, cheese three. Four and five are done. It's time for cheese six. The six of cheeses. So I don't think I'm the only one, but I really hate painting anything that's yellow or just remotely yellowish. So it's not like pieces that I'm driving them. And if they're not quite right, I can just adjust that later. But I do like how they're sculpted. It's not just flat, there's a little bit of like texture in there. So if I do a bit of dry brushing data, it's going to really bring out the texture. You will also notice that I am painting the yellowish parts right now because they are the lighter portion. And if I get a little bit of paint onto the sides, which we painted a slightly darker brown later on, it's still okay because I can just cover up the yellow. I just look at a slightly different discoloration in the wood. And that still isn't a problem because it just looks better with a little bit of color variation. So one thing to keep in mind when painting is just the order that you're painting things in. Especially if you're using this painting style with the underpainting first, then transparent paints over because if you don't plan exactly what colors you are painting in order with, you're gonna find that you're gonna make a lot of mistakes and have to go back and fix them up. So I actually argue that if you're just completely new to painting, painting like this isn't always the best choice because you might not have enough control of where the paint goes to not make a mess. This is more for like advanced painters that already know that they can paint. The paint normally goes where they want it to go and they're not like frustrated because they can't paint a face without getting paint on the chest, neck, hair, whatever.
In fact, I would argue that as long as you're not afraid to try things out, almost anyone can get the basics of painting fairly easily. So when I ran a painting workshop, and I just had people coming by to learn how to paint, most of them put up really good things for like a couple of hours of painting. Alright, so for things, uh, let's see. A little bit of yellow ish, and I could use that to do the center of the red rose so you get a little crust like the inside the bread. But I think that should be a bit of a beige color, so we we'll use this savage beige. I'm not sure, so savage about it, but sure. Ah. It's a beige, you wrote off. Uh, I prefer dropper bottles because I'm clumsy. One thing I don't like about the little pots is that if you are clumsy and you have people around you that are clumsy, you will find that you can lose half a pot of paint very quickly. Um, I'm just going to apply this in the center and at the side to where you can see the red has been broken. And the color difference is not so obvious. It's not really obvious yet. And that's okay. It's just very subtle. Um, not too fast at this point if I get any of the paint on the outside as well. Like I say, that's because you know, you're painting a darker color over. So if you're the type that likes to turn off your brain when you're painting, uh, maybe spend a bit of time before you actually start painting something to figure out how you want to do it. That into the recesses. It's more at sight. Okay. Oh, the dire cow has resubscribed. Thank you, cow. I see that your subscription collapsed because we haven't been streaming for a while. Oh no. Said it. Thank you for your sub. And thank you for helping paint stuff. I have more stuff for you to paint. It is freshly primed. I need someone to paint some fabric. There are like a few bolts of fabric and dresses of fabric. So I could paint it or I could ask you to paint it and you have much more experience with fabric than I do. Okay, so I've done the inner beige portion of the bread, which means I need to paint the outside now. And I kind of want to have a nice orangey brown. And I am craving some bread right now. 
this is dangerous to do when it is 10 p.m. at night and you are painting food. Why do I do this to myself? Sando sounds really good right now. Bacon egg cheese. Okay, let's try a few different options. We have Griff Pound Orange, which so the oldest little contrast paints tend to be pretty dull. They are not the brightest. I don't mean I don't mean James which I mean the paints. So with how orange and so and I'm drying lock down. So let's try that out. To do a food stream for Twitch and NTV. That is something I can consider, yes. So can I just painting this i'm painting around the edges i'm doing my best not to go into the center but i don't eat a lot not anymore like back when i was going to the gym really often yeah Let's see can i just painting the outside and trying to avoid And I just really, really want some bread right now, like in your life. Good review, yeah. Hoopsie can do his thing. So I definitely got a little bit of paint into there. Not a big problem. In fact, if the original color actually was fully dry, I would just wash off my brush, dip it in the center, and then just clean that off. So, but that was Games Workshop. Still, Griff Hound Orange. Let's try something a little different. It's called Drain Knife. It's from the Instant Colors series. It's part of a peachy shadowy flash tool. Which is also fine. Okay, I think I need to poke the hole in this paper. Yeah. That sounds terrible out of context. Don't quote me. So we got a little bit of the yellow in there. Okay, beach, beach, focus, you can see. And right now I'm just gonna be applying this color. Don't do this to me and talk about food when it is 10 p.m. and I am starting to get a hot This is not fair. This is bullying the streamer. So uh compared to the Griffon Orange, the instant color is a lot lighter. It's a lot less coverage. It's really more of a traditional glaze, I would say. Other than a true contrast, especially with some colors. That doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It means that I can mix more colors to drop in it if I really want to. The 
Ah, I almost dropped something. So, let's not bring two different colors. That's red, orange. Hello, small endeavors. Thank you for your follow. And if you get a chance, drop us a message in chat and let us know how you found our stream. It's nice to have you with us. So I would use red, green, orange. Which is a very suspicious sounding name to be honest. I mean, if you're ordering some for me, I wouldn't mind, but I actually haven't had a chance to eat that yet. So, applying that red meat orange. Oh, cool. Yeah, thanks, John, for doing a shout out for us. I appreciate it. So, what I'm painting right now is the Vey Victor's Market set. And I'm demonstrating how I'm going to do some underpainting, whether it's with an airbrush or with a zonal dry brush pipe. And just applying some translucent colors over the minute just to get into a tabletop release that so if you were to ask me whether or not i'll be satisfied with this the answer is of course no i have hard to please but getting these to a reasonable standard fast is really important because ain't nobody got time to really fully paint a manager for high standard Messing with this. I mix a little bit of the grief found orange in, so you will find that these pieces are slightly different. I was also careless and got some into the whiter beige portion that we did. So I'm gonna take some water clean off my brush and with a damp brush rub this up. But yeah, thanks for coming by to say hi. It's always nice. Meeting people that are interested in 3D painting. So, okay. Is it perfect? No. But if the if my DM has complaints about it, I would I will assault him. With a stuff toy. We do it in stream all the time anyway. Well, as I say, if you have problems, you can paint it yourself. In fact, I think that the people have asked for a crimson painting stream. We must give the people what they want. I mean, all this kind of bread normally has like the white here because it's like cracked open, but it's not painted as it is. How already we didn't sneak attack, you didn't see it. So it didn't happen. Uh -huh. Safe. Uh, no, stop getting more cow toys for the office. Why do we need more cow toys? Uh, at this point, I'm not sure which exact color I'm using to do the the brown for the bread. Because I can't just mix every single color together. I'm terrible at being consistent with color choices and palette. But the 
it's fine. Oh. Oh. Go away. Like BB. Go away. Ah. Don't you dare taunt me. I will hit you. Err. Okay, Danzorus. And I mean, it's pretty fast for what? Less than an hour of painting, given that I was doing a monologue for like the first half an hour. Clems needs to do more work out. Should take him to the gym or something then. Uh, go away, Max Lapis, you are dead. Uh, uh, go away. Okay, it's time to paint the tomato. I could use the nice bright red that I use for the black facts. Or I could try out more colors. Now I try out more colors. It's a color called the affair. Romantic. And then I can put light green. Such interesting naming schemes. That also have me not leave So life beta folks. I think I also want to use my pro approaches parent rate, which is somewhere. Mm. Okay, tell you what, I'm gonna roughly apply the red color first with, with the color that I have on here, and then I'm gonna go highlight with the pro of pro way to make it more saturated hi rose i'm glad you join us good evening and how are you doing tonight tonight i guess that it falls and i'll be a little more clean for this so i will take out this serious brush because and there this little green part on the tomatoes and I do not want to paint onto them. So it's time for the fire heart mode one. Okay, that is the life weight. I am not pleased with how dull it is. It kind of looks more like a pillar than it's okay. Like this color has no life. I am disappointed. Let's use the other Let's try it out. If it's any brighter. So just uh, put some food with friends. Sounds nice. Reconnecting with old friends is also great. I think that I really need to be the one to put more holes in those things with this. Just can't squeeze out. It's alright. Let the to the rescue. Yeah, it's a super dull looking bait. So I think it'd be great if I were doing leather. Super useful for that. And of course, the downside is that when you're painting with colors as translucent as this, the red is going to get dulled down even harder. So in most cases, you might as well just use a normal red. Okay, so let's try using 
entities is blood green and that is more like it right that is a weird It's a little on the magenta side, but whatever. A 12 year friendship. It's, uh, it's quite a long time. In fact, I think that's about the length of time that I've known the other people in NTP. So that really is quite a long time. They're all getting old, guys. I'm getting old, we're getting ancient. So I'm trying my best to avoid the green parts. It's not easy. So this is why I say that for this style of painting, you really do need to be a little more careful with where you're putting your paint. Which is for beginners. It's not just about having a fast and easy painting method. It's also about the brush control. For your painting flow exactly where you want it to go. And in this, because I'm putting paint on without really diluting the paint. I'm keeping my brush damp. And I would normally wipe off a bit onto a damp paper towel. If I was really worried about being very precise. But right now, this isn't super precise yet. So if you're looking at the paints right now and you're thinking that it's a bit too magenta, you want to look a bit more like a red that you get in the tomato. Uh, I think a bit of orange will fix that. But that's all later on. So I just want them from vague right now. I'm not worried about highlighting, I'm not worried about anything other than getting some color in there. I think that's something that I really have to focus on when I'm doing to read that yes, it might look really good right now because there is still more work to be done, still more steps to highlight. And back when I started painting, I was painting a lot of terrain, I got really stuck on stuff because it didn't look as good as I wanted it to. It's just maybe a, a base coat. Or I had trouble picking the right colours to highlight with. And then things just didn't turn out the way I wanted them to do. And I had to force myself to stop going, hey, I need to buy new paints to get this one colour. And focus more on trying to portray, I guess, a colour with the paints I had. Learning how to mix, learning how to paint textures. So that was the biggest improvement, like, to look at something be able to analyze it, not just go, oh no, the brown I put down doesn't look very brown. And yes, here's many more years of hit as friends. It has been a pleasure knowing you guys. I just definitely like myself. Nice. Okay, 
British box there. So if there's one thing about tomatoes is that they tend to be a little shiny, I guess. The skin can be glossy and reflective. To be fair, I'm almost always laughing at people. I'm always greatly entertained by people playing D and D. But I'm glad that you enjoy playing in books. Okay, fair. Hashtag no contacts. I swear guys, it's not as bad as it sounds. But it was a very strong first impression, yes? And like the, the look of utter disbelief your party members gave you is pretty funny. Yeah. yeah, it's a great observation that makes sense. No, no, it's not. Yeah, just. It's more of like, okay, that's a great deduction. Alright, alright. No, stop, go back. No, yes, exactly. Where did I go wrong? Thanks to you, we got an art change. Poor Miss Green. Almost done with plus three tomatoes. To be fair, I, I think the other one that was highly entertaining was just having you print out a whole list of vicious mockery insults and trying your best to to deliver them. But you sounded so nice and innocent. Just like, I need to work on delivery. Talk like you're mean. You could, it still has food bonds with you. Okay, so great things are done. The flower pinkish right now. Which is fine, I'll be highlighting them. So, not satisfied with just picking them up. Uh, these pieces are apples. But painting them the same colors to my nose doesn't feel right. Let's try to. Peaches, clubs, yep. 
Yep. Does houses look like a grape to you? Your mom's a grape. This is Tobago. Grape. Same. Not same scale. Not big grape. Small grape. How can it be a grapefruit when it has a stem? Like grapefruit still come with stems like this. Stems look all different. Uh, should I just paint them green and they can be like green apples? If they were orange, have a bit of a texture. Plus, maybe. I'm not gonna answer that. Yes, no, maybe it's not an answer. Yes or no. Make your insight check. Okay, I, I have a bit of pork flesh. Orcs are fungus, right? They're all fungi, so... This is fine. I do like this color. It's very nice saturated. Green. What color is an orange? Yellow, apparently. Thank you. Such amazing and useful insight, guys. I can always count on you to be helpful. Can you imagine if I was a color blind with a uh, painter? Seriously. It's nice and easy. So it'd be plums. Or, you know, as an old friend once said, it's blue. Tomatoes are a fruit, but you don't want to put them in fruit salads. Also, I see Crimson cannot help but start DMing even when it's just a chill stream. That nice, lovely. Taiwan's not a fruit, she's a fish. Anyone that plays Genshin knows this. You should start. Like, it's a really fun game.
and the music screens. I would show you, but I didn't want to get my stream muted on Twitch. Just play Genshin, come on. At least get to rank 10 and try it out. Like, as playing as a single player RPG without paying money for gacha is really fun. Okay. They are so purple. Look at this. Transparent purple. The use of Thanos is also a very marketable game. I see why you like it. Of course you do. It's so predictable. So now I have a bunch of paints on my palettes that I have not used. This time to paint the books. And they are not great if they are clubs. How dare you? Mm, I could try painting more nicely. But I shall paint as I'm newbie. Painting Lindsay Light is hard. Just paint everything. It's all purple. All you need. Purple? Purple. Yes, but what if the game is in 3D? What now? If they're in Lysi problem. Okay. So, it's really purple. I would argue that it's a little bit too heavy in quotes. But it's pretty nice for a spell. This is where I tend to bring in the uh, other colors to highlight with. Right, so that pigment in particular, I believe is called dioxazine purple. It's one of my favorites. Uh, I use it for shadows all the time because it's excellent. Dark, lovely saturation. So deep, so nice. It's terrible out of context. Moving on. Let's use the flat rate. Do the blood read. I'm not in it all over except for along the that strap. Let's not cover the entire book. And when I get the chance, I am going to go over and just highlight selected parts. Selected parts. Because I could be more precise, but so this is just easier to read this. Less stress from the lines for sure.
So we have Toko and we have Vader. And let's not make the last book green because we have the green team or something. Are you coming from 27th? Okay. Be sure to sign up online if you have not signed up yet. And I'll see you then. Yes. Bye. Good night. Rest well. Sleep tight. Uh, I we have taken purple instead of green. Classic. Look at that. Special purple. It's hard to tell because it's also dark. Need that off. Sleep early. What's that? I'm gonna have a little bit of purple shading in green, I guess. That's okay. Quite like the effect. I like the purple, I'll just grab some bright ivory. Like that, okay. I could list the purple was still wet, maybe a lot faster, but. Bit of bright ivory, a little bit of purple. Super fast highlights. See if H highlights. I just hit the outer spider of the book. That color. So it's just an easy way that you could do to. Elevate whatever you're painting. It's not live. This highlight color is very messy. And if you're too lazy, you don't have to do this step at all. Just don't like to it. So I took a little bit of that original transparent purple and I'm pulling it up. into the highlight the paper. So you have a quick and easy web blend. And you can spend some time to refine that. Or if you just not care. Either way. It's a really nice arcade book. And ultimately, I guess the question is, how much do, do you care about something that's just going to be used in a table like this? 
spend more time with that for sure. We can do what we're doing now, spend a little bit more time going back and forth, landing, be a bit more precise than I am. To clean up this inch. Don't want to do that, then you just leave that as is. And on the table, it's okay. Maybe highlight a little bit further if you are worried about it not standing out enough. So I mix a little bit more transparent purple into the bright ivory. Don't forget it always dries down. Don't be afraid. A little bit of your highlights. Look at that. Super bright. So I know some painters who go to near white on almost everything they paint and it looks gorgeous it looks really good but it can take a lot of time so decide if that's for you Do the same for the black B. Bit of white mix in with that. Uh, but in order to not make it too pink, I'm going to take a bit of the yellow and the beige. And start this almost matched on top of it's definitely pinkish. But for this one, it just doesn't need as much highlight because it wasn't as dark as the moment. I just like the way it helps it pop a bit. Especially on the inner part of the book, even if it's a Also, color separation. So, one of the first things that I, I was painting uh, was actually a lot of bookshelves. And I got really frustrated with painting them because I had issues with the kind of control that I'm showing right now, which is casually doing some highlights. And uh, I was painting over a very dark brown. And I got so frustrated because I was painting a very dark brown. I had issues getting paint to not flood everywhere in the job. And I went, I want some really bright colors. So I got a very saturated bright red. And for those of you that have painted bright reds before, you know why I got really sad because I was putting that color on and it, there was no difference. I was like, why is it looking so dark no matter what I do? The truth is that most very really bright saturated colours don't have much coverage. You're gonna be fighting yourself to try and paint them without layering them over a much brighter colour. White. We're just gonna cry with this. They try to paint yellow over like black or something. 
I mentioned that I hate them because I hate them. Not perfect. But I think that it's decent. Oh, this part here on the beach. Yeah, looks okay. And uh, the stats and books, I'm gonna paint them a different color, so I'm not fast. Each highlighting time, my favorite thing to do. I've been trying to paint non today metal. So I've been doing a lot more age highlighting. You have no choice. It's not bold enough. Let's move on to more of the books I have. Five more books to paint. And let's focus on using out that purple. I thin it down a bit more so it doesn't look as heavy as at first thought. It's okay. It's my desk type highlighting. That is always a bonus. Now, of course, I could actually use the colors I have on them on hand for this, like my pro or cloth. But that would require actually reaching over to take the cutters for the box. And I am a lazy painter. I'm very, very lazy So, with the nice result of shading, I've done this already. Fly. See that the V is very natural shading, slowing the recesses, and it was still being very saturated. That's why this this purple in particular is one of my favorite to use as a wash like this to add definition and some color interests. I applied that little messy, so I wipe a bit off the side. But it's not a huge problem. I can do with that. Okay, 
two other covers I want to have on hand. Let's pull out the data back to blue. It's a nice arcade colors. I use a crappy mixing brush for that because I don't want to damage my already highly abused brush, but you don't want to damage it more. So, it'll make blue. So apply that over the book in the center. This here, focus. So that was just a lot more just loops than previously. And when I add a bit of white to it, it becomes this really nice teal tone. So, so, I like that. So contrast paints like this I find are a lot better when you are wet blending with the messy paints. They make your painting a lot more efficient. If not willing to mix with contrast paints, you're definitely losing out the best uses for them. Oops, time to that ish. Let's do the green. I'm gonna apply this directly, super heat, neat, and then. I want this color to be very strong. And also because I'm painting red, and red is translucent by default. A couple of hours since I started painting. Wow. It's since I started the stream. That's normally when I stop. But I think I can at least power through and finish the books. And then I'll take any questions if anyone has them on like the process. Because after I finish the books, I think I'm going to go over to the to the like one wooden piece and just show how applying a translucent brown wet blended looks really good. So right now the highlight ends up looking really big. That's okay because when you're working just to paint, you will thin down the original color and apply that over the highlight again. Mm. Oh, I 
not that big actually. So that's what I do. In most cases, it's actually not that but if it's still a bit wet. Wipe it off. And it's not really obvious though. So. Oh, it's purple, purple book, which means that this one looks functionally turquoise. And what happens when I mix? Just do some colors. Too much purple. That's purple. More turquoise. Let's get that color. But then down. One thing about transparent purple is that when you add it to colors a bit more turquoise like this, it kind of like intensifies it a lot. So in this case, because the purple is so much stronger, I end up with this purplish blue. But I have used it with other colors and adds out a bit more blue. Like a very intense deep blue tone. And quick bottle is my favorite color for giving the shading in general. This gets really interesting results. Purple shadows. So I think the purple is too strong for this. I want to bring back more of the other... I'm going to do that by... taking the turquoise tone and highlighting a bit. Because I mix a lot of bright ivory in. It's very saturated. It's fine. I'm fine with this. I like this fold. It's so far as green. Focus. And that's all the books. Mostly done. I need a bit of brown, I think. So I'll take the transparent brown out for this because I'm going to use that too. So transparent brown is a lovely, very versatile color. I need to really thin it out to see like all the colors that you can get in there but when painted over most things it's a bit more like an orange yellow tone but this makes it a really good color for staining any kind of wood so with what we have so far I'll demonstrate it by applying over this grey uh, leather strap. 
Ze is toch niet zo. Nou, ik niet stak. Random spot. En je vindt die voor. Oké. En wat doet hij daar? Ook jong. Is hij nice dan? So it's great from that uh, all good. Depending on what you're trying to get. And I'm definitely being very messy with this. What is sleep? Sleep is something that we don't get enough of. If you've been just sleeping, then you're just dreaming, aren't you? So don't be super lazy and paint wood effects super fast. Transparent brown is your best friend. So. Got the big brush. I'm thinning out the brown. It's a pretty nice wetted brown. See? That's like what? 10 seconds? So if you had gone a little brighter with your other color, original color, maybe you mix in a different highlight color that isn't gray-ish, get a warmer tone. But this for like a super low effort brown is one of my favorites. I'm just gonna apply that same brown on all of these pieces as well. Focusing on like the top half. And I will need to go in and do the sides and uh, like some of the inner parts in a smaller brush. Yeah. But these pieces are so easy to just work with. I do have to say that it's also because the details are sculpted fairly deeply, so when you do like a heavy wash or base like this, they pop pretty well. And there are times when I do want to sculpt, uh, paint stuff that's like sculpted in a really unfriendly way. But not when it comes to terrain like this, I will cry. It's, it's such a nice wood brown, isn't it? It's so versatile. I actually got a little bit more on the... Uh, so there's this couple of times when I would underpainted this brown with a little bit of a 
yellow or red tones and it works really well so you could also maybe mix it with some red ink and get a pretty nice mahogany tone for example but just looking at this from a top-down perspective i think it looks pretty good and that's the important thing because this is going to be looking at stuff on the table that's why i say you don't worry about painting your wood grain or anything else just try and get your values right first so that when you do this it looks good of course if i'm painting uh stuff like this in bulk i wouldn't be use using this particular paint i'll be using oil paints instead like i did when doing my larger terrain pieces but it's the same technique same paint uh, same pigment different medium And because I, you see, I, I did that really bright instead of all. Still see the sides of the piece are still shaded. Looks good. All right, almost forgot. Z tomato. Needs green stamps. Is that pop green? It's not okay. Looks a bit weird. Hmm. I'll decide later. Brown first to add more brown. It's just a color that when I first got some, I tried that out and I was like, hey, I need to paint a lot more terrain. I, I need to buy more of this. That's how I got my second bottle. Slightly overkill. You need to be careful here. I'm getting brown my hands. So I'm being impatient and not waiting for like parts to dry. Why not? So what is one of the things where you really want to learn or figure out your own like, method for painting it and get the right shortcuts for it? Because what well, is thing I do enjoy painting, I paint a lot of it. And I would like it to remain something that I enjoy painting. Yeah. All right, cheese, cheese trays. I have to admit that if the way this cheese is sliced, it looks like a pie. Eh. I also didn't realize it, but there are rivets. 
on the side of this. It's not super obvious. But it does mean that I will have to remember to do a little bit of highlighting on them for my finishing touches. I guess when I do like the, the armor parts. Adding more color to this. Time is 11 11 pm. I guess I'll stop after I've like base coated the pieces that I've started painting so far. And I can get a nice picture. The studio is a nice place, but I would not want to crash here overnight again. Is that when the when the beige yellowish tone dry? It's not really obvious. That's fine. It just means that I but I want to have to dry brush there. Fix that. <gasps> I'm actually super tempted to paint the metal weapons with like non-metallic metal. Even though I know I shouldn't because they're just marketplace displays. But also temptation. Maybe I'll like paint one set with true metallics and the other with non-metallic metal. Just, I think it's been a while since I've had this doing true metals properly. And shaded true metallics are actually pretty close to non-metallic metal. Just more shiny than this bit.
So at least if I'm going to be running any games that have marketplaces, they won't look so empty. Like I think in terms of terrain, we're now at a point where we are trying to fill out locations with more scattered terrain. It's not just about like rain and line of sight blogger. We we'll actually want to fill out places and fill as though they have their own flavor. Maybe feel like lived in. Okay, we just use a little bit of the brown. That's a ball should be outside. A little bit more shading. Find the shades. And it's actually really good for them. Lights. Okay, focus. See, now you can see the texture. Just the brown, such a nice yellowish brown. So I apply that for the cheese. As a wash. Maybe it adds an extra shade. Get a bit here as well. I'll just try brushing lighter color. So having a translucent brown wash is really important no matter what you're painting. So if you're painting food, yes it's great. If you're something that's a little more on the reddish side, it's great for armor, great for leather. Great for skin tone even. So since I want a more darker, cooler brown, I use Vanilla Smoke for that instead. Hey, that's a good job. I still want brown to paint the outside. This piece is... And I'll paint the inside parts when I'm done painting the individual glass. But for the flask, I think I'm going to use like gemstone paint. A little shiny, a little more translucent. And just get some nice, easy, bright colors. But we will see. Maybe I'll, I'll go crazy to say, I want to paint all of this. Custom painted liquid effects because life is too easy. 
don't want to make a card. Oops. Right, so this piece as well. More to work on, and that's but that's mainly for the general sort of stuff with the books, the magic effects, the flask potions, weapons. The fruit is mostly done, and just need to kind of like touch up the fade for the tomatoes, and then dry brush the I guess the green. But this is a pretty fast and easy stream, I would say. Uh, we did some work by beforehand by doing a zenith of highlight with an airbrush. But if you're not using the airbrush, you can just base everything one color, dry brush up with maybe an off white, and then with white. And then when you do what I did with applying just do some colors over, it's a very fast and easy way to get you know, stuff done. That's especially for the brown, yes. Don't you think it's pretty decent? For like 10 seconds of work. It's just one color applied all over to Zenithal Prime. And the nice thing I like about this is that it doesn't require as much brush control. Sure, you have to still be careful not to paint the brown onto a red or green, but when that's the main thing is to focus on everything else is easy. So I'll be taking some pictures later on uh, when I'm done with all these pieces and do a group shot of everything. And then if you come to the studio and you play with in our games, you're gonna get a chance to see them in action sometime. But it's also 11.30 and I would like to catch the last bus for first a drink. Yes, get spot with nice means when you come to our studio. And then like Why is it when I play D and D elsewhere I don't have like mini to terrain? I'm sorry guys. It's all downhill from there. 
But you know, we don't need nice beats to way to play D&D. It's just the way we like playing here because we enjoy making pretty things. And I do find that it helps people that have trouble concentrating the game, has something to focus on or imagine when they are playing. That looks nice, come on. I love having pretty things on the table. Yeah, and sometimes when when we're playing games, people will just pick up on me and be like, hmm, this paint job is not bad. And just behind them, like, yes, I should hope so. I painted it. If it's painted badly, it wasn't me. Hmm. All in all, it's just in the early stages of painting life. But I try to have our staff look at these decent on the table like this because it just looks gorgeous visually and building town scenes is one of my favorite things to do because we have such nice terrain for buildings. And I think it really helps people get immersed to what a fantasy world might look like. Especially for people you know, that don't be really play games or watch movies or television. It really, really helps. And you know, the easiest way to get your D&D group to pay attention and start thinking about tactics is putting a nicely painted boss mini on the table. Like, you know, a nice big dragon. It just lands there and you just smile at them and they start looking at each other and paying attention. Six strats for every DM. In any case, thanks for joining me for today's episode of NTP Paint. I'm Jazzyon. Be sure to wait on YouTube for our VOD from this session. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up on Discord. Our Discord is down below in the description. And hey, I see you have seen my D&D marketing strat. Yes. Wooden cubes are a great way to play D&D. Come on. Like, we started out using aquarium shinies. Like, you know those little, like, shiny tokens? Or, like, erasers. Country erasers play D&D. But then it got a bit confusing. It's like... Okay, you know, am I Singapore? Are you Singapore? Are you the USA? I find that I like having this stuff. It's pretty. It looks good. And yes, this was not the dungeon master writing and marketing stream that you thought it was. It was actual marketing. <laughs> yes. Cubes cannot go prone. So, uh, as the story goes, we're trying to like mark things out with conditions on the map. To, so people wouldn't get confused, but if it's a perfect cube or a set of dice and you're trying to like push them over so that they go prone, it's a bit harder. But hey, can't complain. At least you have a grid map. It's a little easier things than doing everything theater of the mind when you have party members that can't remember where they are. And yeah, no worries. Thanks for dropping by. The YouTube video will go up sometime this week or next, so you can catch up on what you missed. But thanks for coming by anyway. It's like, it was nice to see you. At like 11.30pm, so just before we all go to sleep, I hope. If you're not sleeping soon, you should be. Unless you're like, you know, at the other end of the world. And hey, Kat, you sneakily hated in without telling me that you were listening in. Hi. Also, bye everyone. I'll see you all around on Discord, wherever as always. Have a good night. It's time to go to the stream ending. Sweet. Stream ending. Sound effect.